Saucing, saucing, I'm saucing on you. I'm swagging, I'm swagging, I'm swagging on you. I'm ballin', I'm ballin', I've a song on you. Oh, watch out, oh, watch out, oh, watch out, oh, yeah. I smash out, I smash out, I smash out, oh, yeah. I'm spending, I'm spending on my fucking pay. Day in the life. <clears throat> Day in the life. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the video. What do you guys think about my hair? My mom did it. I think it looks pretty good, or my standards have greatly reduced since quarantine. Today is gonna to be a day in the life of me. I'm gonna take you guys through my day, tell you guys about my routine. It's changed just a little bit, got some exciting news, got some recipes, got a workout, just a full packed, fun day that I'm gonna hold your hand and take you along with me. So this morning I woke up at around 7.45, picked up Ollie, we went to go get coffee. Tim Horton, so I don't always go to get coffee. I usually go to get coffee maybe like once or twice a week. It's just something about drinking out of a to-go cup just gets me going. It just, I don't know, it can't be beat. You can put like the coffee at home in this and it'll just taste significantly better. What do you guys think? Comment down below. After that, came home and did some editing on a future video. Constantly editing throughout the day, just little snippets here and there. I'm not one to just sit and just cram stuff in all at one time. I like to do maybe like an hour, two hours max, stop, take a little bit of break and then continue. Just keeps my mind a little bit fresh. After I do my editing, I then grab my journal and write down my three main goals of the day. You might have more than three, but I just find three to be a good number because it's realistic and attainable, not very overwhelming for a single day. And then as I get them done, I check them off. Nothing feels better and more satisfying than checking something off. You might not have anything specific to do that day, but it's very important every single day to find your purpose. Keep your mind active. You should always be asking yourself, how am I expressing my creativity instead of just sitting and watching Netflix? Keep that brain active. So these goals don't have to be like grand. It's not gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna go fire up Rosetta Stone and learn Cantonese in one day. Small goals still go a long way in terms of motivation and how you feel. So the journal I use is called La Meadow Rose has three here because what this one does is it focuses on your three main goals of the day and it gives you a little checklist to check it off as you go. So the reason why I like this one is just straight to the point. It has your page, write your three goals down, check it off when you complete it, write some notes about how it felt, what are you gonna do next week better, just some notes. So it's just, I like this, makes me more productive, keeps me motivated throughout the day. I'll link it down below for you guys to check it out. So let's get into the day. So as you can tell by this body of water behind me, my pool is now open. So I'm gonna take full advantage. So every day I ask myself, how am I gonna use my body beyond just lifting weights? Because with fitness, it's a lot more than just lifting weights. So what I like to do is choose a form of cardio and get it done nice and early in the morning. If you hold it off, you are more likely to just blow it off. So I like to get 30 minutes to an hour of cardio. This could be walking, it could be going for a run, it could be going for a bike. Or now because the pool is open and I'm from Canada and we only have four months, I'm gonna go start swimming. I'm a terrible swimmer, guys. I am so bad. I'm like the aquatic equivalent to the prom night virgin. I think actually Ollie is a better swimmer than me. So my plan now is to wake up every morning and then get around 20 laps there and back. My pool is 40 feet and then gradually build that up over time to I, until I get to around 50, 60. We'll see what I get to by the end of the summer. Let's do it. Sick hair. I feel like I should be in some sort of a like emo boy band right now. But I wonder how many calories swimming burns. So I'm gonna start a workout on my Apple Watch and see. Three, two, one, let's do it. Wow, so I did 30 minutes. The bare minimum, I'm gonna work my way up. So I burned 309 calories, which is pretty good in 30 minutes. I am so much worse at swimming than I thought I was. Like I, I say, my swimming form would best be described as a sloth swimming in sinking sand. I'm definitely a land animal. But when I was swimming and just going like this, everything was snapping. My knees were snapping, shoulders were snapping, back was snapping. So I think snapping in a good way. So I feel like at the same time getting my cardio and I'm also stretching very good for my joints. So we'll see by the end of the summer how good of a swimmer I am. Ollie, say hi to the camera, dude. What's up? So Ollie has this thing now where he's completely like vetoed dog food. He just won't eat his food anymore. And he'll just only have human food. So his diet is just study of Greek yogurt, rotisserie chicken from Costco, watermelon, and then the occasional Timbit. So a potential diet swap with Ollie is now a possibility. I guess it was always a possibility, but just now a little bit more palatable. 
but yeah, I don't know. I think he's just a smart guy now. Thinks after 15 years, if he just stops eating his dog food, he'll get other food in some way. So I'm just cooking up some lunch right now, making a soup, a vegetable soup. So this is a really good option. If you don't really like vegetables that much, putting things into a soup is a really good way to get vegetables in. So this one has cauliflower, got some leek, got a shallot and some garlic. I'm gonna add some chicken broth, but you can do veggie broth or water. I'm gonna add some nutmeg, salt and pepper. It's so good, so low in calories. You got a lot of food and it fills you up too. Look where all these stands when I cook. Your likelihood of tripping is very high. So the soup is done. Everything's kind of cooked down. So I'm just gonna put it into the blender. So what I did beforehand is I weighed out all the vegetables pre-cooked, which will give me the calories for the total soup. So the total soup is gonna be 500 calories. And then what I did was I weighed the blender and then I'm gonna weigh the blender again after the soup has been pureed and then take the difference away. So then the total weight will equal the total veggies. And then that's how I'll kind of like distribute it. So I'll know the calories of the meal. All right, so it's been blending for probably a couple minutes now. Oh yeah, cool. Creamy that thing is. Ma. Yeah. You wanna try a taste? Yes. Of my soup. Grab yourself a spoon. So look at this, mom. This whole pot. 500 calories and all of that. Wow. Yeah. That looks amazing. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is. has a baby food esque to it, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Be honest now. People people might be making this. When am I not honest? Yeah, that's true. That is good. For someone who wouldn't like vegetables, you think that'd be good? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's amazing. If you don't like veggies, blend them. Recipe it's in the keeper. description. So this whole bowl of soup is 140 calories. Can't beat it. And as you can tell by the time, it's only not even 1.30 right now. And I'm on meal number two. So guess what? I don't do intermittent fasting anymore. Because what I've found is the earlier that I eat, the better that I look. Even though I'm on the same amount of calories, does that even make sense? I don't know. I just find that when I start eating around like 9, 30, 10 in the morning and just have like, I don't like have like massive meals. I have like smaller meals and I still gear most of my calories later in the day, but I still eat something in the morning when I wake up. I had something at like 9, 30 this morning before I went into the pool. Yeah, so I've just found like my gym performance has been better and I look leaner and I look better on the same calories just eating a little bit earlier. So that's why I don't do intermittent fasting anymore. So I'm in the middle of my chest, back and biceps workout and it finally feels normal to work out in my basement. Ever since quarantine, I come downstairs and I'm like, this is not the gym, it just doesn't feel the same. But now it just feels normal, it feels good and I actually kind of like it now. So in terms of my training, my training has been awesome. Like my priorities have kind of changed. I've been way more form focused. I feel like a lot of times, including myself, we all kind of like rush progress. We get kind of greedy and we just want to add more weight every single session, but I've just been very patient and I've just been making sure every single set, every single rep that I do just looks exactly like my warm up sets. And it's been really paying off. Like I've noticed a lot of difference in my shape and my muscle and everything. Also training a lot of higher reps as well. So things have been really good. So in terms of how I split up my cardio and my weights, I make sure it's a minimum of four hours apart. So I, I did a swimming at around uh, 10 a.m this morning and it, right now it's almost it's 222 so four hours and 22 minutes apart um, I would never kind of combine the two I just don't I just don't like doing that but if you absolutely have to I mean that's what you gotta do right if I take it down would you really hold me down and be your best friend she just wanna hit me with a quickie by the pool and I'm like yes man when you got me feeling for your body you might turn me to a yes man
scrimping. You ain't the first to really sell that shit. Champagne with the roof gun. Bump this jam back in Tucson. Think I got to get a move on. Never had my Okay, so I've been looking for ways to make exercises harder at home, especially with my dumbbells. My dumbbells only go to 50 pounds, and that's obviously not heavy enough for certain exercises. So I was looking online for ways to make exercises harder with the weight that I have. And I found this one exercise called the humble row for your back. Really good for the upper back and traps. It's on the chest supported thing. So a lot of times we do chest supported rows and we hold the dumbbell in a hammer grip and we just kind of pull back like that. But with the humble row, you want to hold the dumbbell like this. So you're holding it outward and you're still lying on the chest supported thing here, but you're pulling to your upper back here and down. So I've been doing three sets in the 12 to 15 rep range, only 40 pounds here. So not a lot of weight and it's really, really difficult. So if you guys have limited equipment at home or you only have only, oh, well, I'm out of breath. Or if you only have like limited equipment, it's a really good one to add. All right, so very quickly before I shower, I thought I'd show you guys what I do for my skin and my hair because a lot of you guys have been asking me. So for my skin, I have a skin condition called keratosis pilaris and it's on my cheeks. A lot of times people get it on their upper arms and their back. So a lot of the stuff that I do is to try to mitigate that as much as I can. You can't eliminate it, you can just kind of reduce the symptoms. Also, I have very, very sensitive skin, so I have to be very careful, so I really focus on natural products. So when I'm in the shower, I use African black soap and I put it on my face, whole body. Don't use this for shampoo, just for body. When I get out of the shower, I use this uh, all natural moisturizer. Uh, usually with moisturizers, um, I put it on my face and like I like I get like a flare up, which means it gets like really red. But with this one, it's very like calm and just like not very harsh. So like this one a lot. I always use it. Probably been using it for the past couple of years. And then this is for like after like if, if I work out at the gym, I'll use this on my face. I always have it in my gym bag, and I bring a big sleeve of these cotton pads and just dab my face. But if I'm working out at home like I am now, I don't usually use this because I go into the shower right away. And so that's pretty much it for my skin. And then for my hair. I just use a natural shampoo, and then when I get out, I use uh, this Moroccan oil. Just put like about like a, a dime size like drop on your uh, finger, and then massage it into your hair. Uh, then I use this thing called uh, Bumble and Bumble Surf Spray. So this is for more for guys with like longer, or even girls with like longer hair. Uh, you spray it into your hair, and you kind of massage it in. It gives you kind of like that beach wavy look, and like kind of like messy and stuff. So really like that one. And then if I want to style it more, I'll use this uh, Kevin Murphy. Rough Rider clay. Um, it's a stronghold clay, so you can kind of like put your hair into place however you want, and it kind of stays that way. So that is all I do for my hair, and I wash my hair uh, twice a week, sometimes three times a week, depending on how active I am. My room is an absolute joke. Look at this clothing pile on that couch right there. Probably making every mother watching this cringe right now. But I'm about to go do some work, but before I do, I'm gonna go listen to some music for about 10 minutes, because every day I ask myself, how am I practicing self-care today? What am I doing for my mental well-being? What am I doing for my overall happiness? Because guess what guys, your happiness is the most important thing in the world. So other than fitness, cooking, and YouTube, a big passion of mine is music. I find music to be a lot more than just entertainment. I find it to be therapeutic. I find it helps with my mood. I find it very inspiring and motivating. So every day I will come into this room in my house that we call the library, that I'm unsure why, because there's not even a book to be found in this room, and I'll just sit or lie on this couch, stare at the ceiling, and play my favorite songs for 10 minutes straight. Sounds repetitive, I know, but I cannot stress enough how much it has helped me. It's like, I can't even explain. It's just, it makes me smile when I do it. So if you feel down, if you lack motivation to work out, throw your favorite song on. So if any of you guys are actually interested, my favorite artist is John Mayer. Absolutely love him. Like, I'm the biggest fan I think that you could possibly meet. Uh, other favorite artists are Vance Joy, uh, Oh Wonder, and Ali Gatti. Just having a quick little snack. So all it is, is you just get your favorite frozen fruit, put it in a bowl, then throw it into the microwave until it gets kind of like liquidy. And then you add about a teaspoon of stevia and then top it off with some yogurt. So the fruit actually just tastes like pie filling. It's a really nice combination because it's a little bit warm with the cold yogurt. It's awesome, high in protein, very low in calories. So I'm just wrapping up some YouTube work. Just finished a work call for my merch because guys, the merch is closing. So if you guys are watching this on Thursday, yeah, it ends tomorrow. So everything is shutting down on Friday. So if you haven't got anything yet, link is in the description. Also exciting news, I am on the condo hunt. Gonna find my own place, gonna spread my wings and leave the damn house. So the goal is to find my place by hopefully August, around my birthday, August 30th. 
So be on the lookout for that. On my way now to pick up my beautiful girlfriend, Caitlin. So we're going out for dinner. We like to go out for dinner once a week to a place that we both haven't been to before and then eat it in the car together because obviously we can't eat it in the restaurant with what's going on right now. So we're just trying to make the best of our situation and make things seem like normal life as much as they possibly can. So obviously these meals I'm gonna have are higher in calories, carbs, and fat than I normally would. So what do I do? I just make up for it during the day. So today I ate very high in protein. I had two scoops of protein and some grapes in the morning. I then had that soup I showed you guys a carton of egg whites and then some Greek yogurt with the berries, that snack I showed you. So I have this massive buffer of calories to eat tonight so I can just enjoy myself without thinking about it. So just so you guys know, when you guys see me eating all these foods that you wouldn't typically normally think I would eat, I don't. And it's not the fact that I defy the laws of thermodynamics, just a lot of work goes into it. So I'll take away food from certain parts of my day. I'll add more activity to make up for these meals. So you can totally go out and have these awesome meals, but just so you guys know, you gotta make up for it somehow. <laughs> Our relationship is pretty much like 80% food, 20% trust, right? We connect through food, right? So um, we're going to this place called Blondie's Pizza. It's a place I found. I was like, you know what? I like blondes. Are you, are you blonde or dirty blonde? Dirty. She's dirty blonde. I like dirty blondes. Is there a double meaning to that? You bet. And I love pizza. So I was like, it's just a match made in heaven. So we're, oh, <laughs> my bad. Sorry. Okay. So we're gonna go pick up the pizza. So we found the location here. Are we getting pizza or are we going to get like introduced into a cult right now? This is kind of cool situation. Look at that. Black with this like, looks like a fingerprint. Oh. It's a mouth? Yeah. It's, it's a true. weird looking mouth. Your mouth doesn't look like that. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> Those are pretty cute boxes. You gotta be careful. You got some precious cargo there. <laughs> that's, not even, that's not even funny. Oh baby. So this one's mine. So I put chicken sausage, banana peppers, sweet fennel, which I've never seen or heard of on a pizza before, and some pineapple, because pineapple belongs on pizza. What do you think? False. So judging a pizza by the smell, it's it's gonna be a good one. And this crust is plump. Mm. I like a plump crust. Got a little bit of flop to it. Which I don't mind some flop. Oh my God. It's again? Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Quality review. I have a question. Is the crust vegan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So check this out. So she's vegan, as you guys know, and they didn't offer any vegan meats. So she brought her own vegan meatballs with her. I don't know if I should feel happy for you because you're like excited or like just sad for you. Why? I don't know. Why sad? It's because like the world's not made for you. You know what? I don't want to sound harsh. But I feel like if you make a bad pizza, that's like bad enough that I won't eat it, you should be shot. So about halfway done, probably the best pizza I've ever had in my life. I'm actually being serious. What'd you say? No way, my nonna's. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, no longer in the car having pizza. Back at her house, we're watching Deadpool 2, dinner and a movie. We're pretty much couple goals. So we're about 10 minutes into the movie and we decided, hey, time for dessert break. So if you guys are looking for a cake substitute that's somewhat satisfying to the actual thing that's high in protein and low in calories, well boy, do I have a treat for you. So we're gonna be making a microwave protein cake in this cup here, slash bowl. I'm gonna use this one, this fresh vegan protein vanilla chai. So one scoop, which is 29 and a half grams. Tablespoon of coconut flour, love coconut flour. There. And then a tablespoon of Stevia has an extra edge of sweetness to it that the vegan protein also lacks. And then just around a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, or is it baking powder? Yeah, baking powder, you wanna be very careful with this. If you put too much in, you're just gonna ruin the whole thing. And then for the, the wet things, around a quarter of a cup of cashew milk, which is a 62 and a half grams. So just maybe slightly over a quarter of a cup. And I'm gonna smooth it out. So it's visually appealing. So now what I'm gonna do is add half a serving of these vegan chocolate chips. So half a serving is seven and a half grams, but it goes a long way. It's a lot more than you think. Let's take a look at this. Okay, that's around seven and a half grams. It's all you need. Adds a lot of flavor, 35 calories. 
Then what I do is pop this, it looks like cookie dough. Pop this into the microwave for a minute and a half. So obviously, any sort of microwave cake needs ice cream. So I'm gonna go with this one, Cool Way. So I think this one's Canadian, but it is the way to go. Uh, Halo Top's okay. Arctic Zero is sucks. You heard it here first. So this one's really good. So a minute and a half later, this is what you get. Looks really good. Like cookie dough. Chocolate's a little bit melty. So we're gonna top it off with some of this now. Oh my god. So this is 160 calories for the cake. And then the ice cream is 280. How do you eat ice cream? I like put it on the roof of my mouth. I'm like, let it melt. How do you? Yeah. I just put it in my mouth and suck. People who bite their ice creams get the shit out of me. So it's the end of the day right now. It is 11 o'clock. I'm just doing some more editing. I get a lot of my stuff done late at night. I usually work from like around 10.30 till anywhere from like 1.30, 2 in the morning. I'm like my most productive at this time of the day because like everyone's going to sleep right now. So this is just like my time to like really grind it out. So that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make more of these. I really like to do them. So if you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.